Brett. Hi, um, I am going to do this in two videos tonight. I want to go over your um, the tabula process I mentioned in the message um, first, and I'm just going to do one tape on that because this is an assignment that I want you to um, uh, get done uh, as soon as possible. We're on a tight time schedule here and I uh, want you to make sure that you get this done and graded before you do your uh, midterm, which is coming up. Um, if you uh, make a mistake now, I can correct you and let you know what if you if you're doing something wrong because you'll be using this uh, five different times on the midterm, and I want to make sure that you get, um, you know, all your credits. So we'll do this, this one right now. So here is the week we're on the module we're on. Oops, here we go. Over here, uh, painting, July 11th today. So I'm going to go over the painting in a separate video after I finish this one. But, um, Come on down the bottom here where it says tabula example. And then <clears throat> the tabula process is in chapter one of your textbook. You will need your textbook uh, from now on in the course. Um, so if you haven't gotten that, make sure you get that. And just to make it easy for you if you want to do this when you're not, you know, you don't have your book handy, here is a PDF of the first chapter. So you can go ahead and read that. And that will explain the tabula process. Tabula stands, um, it's like an acronym, <clears throat> but it comes from tabula rasa, which means a black blank slate, blank slate. So um, let's see here. So read that. And then here is our example we'll go over. I don't know if you can hear that noise, my dog drinking water <laughs> in the background. Um, anyway, let's see if we can make this bigger. <clears throat> so, like I said, you'll be using this in your midterm. When we have the midterm project, there'll be five questions, and you'll select five different artworks, and then you'll uh, analyze them in different ways. And one of the things that you'll do is apply this tabula process to each one of the five artworks. So if you don't have it down, it could cost you a lot of points on your midterm. Your midterm is worth 25 points and it's one quarter of your total grade. So I really encourage you to do this assignment right away and turn it in and uh, I'll grade it and make sure that you um, understand it correctly before you start your midterm, which we're, I'm gonna give you on Thursday. So here's an artwork. This is the artist, Eyes Again Skim. It's called No For Teddy. It was done in 2014. And then here's a link to, uh, I guess, where it's from. So you can see that picture. So tabula, and it says it's from chapter one. Tabula stands for T-A-B-U-L-A. -A, and the T, first T uh, stands for time. Now, <clears throat> this is... There's actually usually only two things that people get wrong with this. And one of them is that if they haven't, I think, you know, if they didn't do the homework and try to just do the assignment, um, they think time might, uh, I've had people put in like, um, oh, this looks like it's from 1967, or, you know, this looks like it's from a Victorian age, or, you know, it looks like it's from the future. So that's not the um, interpretation of time that we want here. What this is about is spending time to look at the artwork. Um, a lot of, you know, people, there's so much with social media and all the things that are going on. There's a lot coming at us all the time. And uh, a lot of times it's just hard to calm down and really look at something. So this, they recommend, you'll when you read the uh, chapter, he talks about that. And so you'll see that um, he recommends that you take five good long breaths and look at the artwork. So basically, this is the only answer, correct answer for this, is that you spent some time looking at the artwork. <laughs> you just kind of, you know, kind of get centered on it. So then this, the next the A in tabula, the next letter in tabula is A, and in this case, it's association. So this means when you first look at this, is there anything that resonates with you? Is there anything that, you know, you kind of can relate to? So um, 
somebody else filled this out, but uh, the person who filled it out, she said that when she looks at this, she sees seven replica plaster sculptures of a well-known bust of the Egyptian queen Nefertiti known for her beauty. And she tried to be her for Halloween when she was 14. These busts are all wearing cheap yet trendy sunglasses. The pedestals they are sitting on are on casters and each bust has a corresponding sheet metal like panel next to it. So uh, she recognizes Nefertiti and had some relationship in that she tried to be her for Halloween. So now background, this is the one that people make a mistake on. So I will just tell you up front. <laughs> it background means research in this case. It, and where people go wrong is they'll see a painting and they'll say, well, the background has drapes in the, you know, on the wall, or the background is a forest. Or in this case, if you were answering this this one incorrectly, you would say the background is a white wall with metal panels on it. That is not the kind of background, not like the physical background. This is background in terms of getting on Google and looking up something about this artwork. It could be about the artist. It could be about the subject matter. Like in this case, if you weren't sure who Nefertiti is, you could look her up. Um, you you know, you can look up the artist and see uh, if they have, you know, some kind of style. Like when we looked at Maya Lin, you know, if you looked up one of her pieces, you would find out a lot of other information that would back up, um, you know, probably what she's doing in that artwork. So the answer here says, with a little research, I have learned that the artist is German who is known for using arranged and combined found objects that often refer to contemporary society. Her title, No Fretetti, No Fretetti, seems to be combining the phrase no fretting with Nefertiti. I also learned that Nefertiti ruled Egypt during a time of economic prosperity and religious change, and her bust is one of the most copied pieces of Egyptian art. I'm guessing that Genskin is making, okay, so the next one is you for understanding. So we've done time, assessment, I mean time, association, background, and now we're doing uh, you, understanding. So at this point, you're going to, you know, now that you've spent some time looking at it and you've done some background research, maybe you're understanding, you know, it's possible that you're understanding more about the piece than you did when you first looked at it. So I'm guessing that the artist is making some kind of statement about vanity, beauty, standards, and the perceived rewards of being beautiful. The pedestal sculptures seem like identical statuesque women rolling around being chill and allowing us to reflect on them. And then the next one is L, and that's look again. So now that you've looked at it, um, look again and see if there's anything that you missed. And this was one since I first, I've looked at art a lot because, you know, that's my that was my major in school and I'm an artist and that's what I do for fun. And I was really shocked at, um, you know, especially like when students turn, turn these in, they'll sometimes pick an artwork that I've seen before. And when they do the look again, they will see things that I had never seen before. So it's kind of eye-opening. Sometimes what you will miss the first time around. So you'll see, is there anything that you missed the first time or that, you know, you're seeing differently now? So look again. So she, when she looked again, she said she was taken with how much the sculptures look right at home in a contemporary fashion context. And then the final A is um, the first one's association. The last one is assessment. So this is where you give your kind of opinion or what you think about the piece. So this is your thoughts. So you're kind of summing it up. So what she said is on first sight, I was mildly amused by this artwork. Now I'm more interested because the work left me thinking about the timeless nature and power of beauty. So that is an example of going through the tabula process. Now what we want to do, um, let's see here, go back to write it down to your assignment. Take a look at this. Maybe here we go. So it's due July 14th, which is three days, and then you have a uh, some time but I actually I know that's short but I really want you to get this done fast because I want to make sure you get it done before you do the, the midterm this semester is this 10 week semester is really going by quickly so here is the artwork that I'm going to have you you analyze so um 
this just refers back to that first chapter. Uh, this artist is a photographer named Gregory Crewston, and the whole thing should be 200 words. So here is his photograph. And it's from 1998. This is not the artist. This is, uh, I think, where, like a, like, a, like a gallery, I think, maybe where it was or something like that. So just ignore that. Um, so here is, you can fill this out. So you're going to go ahead and do the tabula process. You're going to take five, you know, long breaths and spend some time looking at it. You can, you know, blow it up so you can see it better. Then you're going to see, is there anything in that photograph that you associate with? What's the background in this one? You know, in this one, you'd probably have to look up the artist. Sometimes, like, say if it was you picked a sculpture of, like, a story from Greek mythology. Um, you know, you might look up that story and see what it is. Say you picked a painting of a Civil War battle. You know, you would go back and see what, what was going on in that you know, that they depicted in the painting. So you could research the battle. So sometimes you're researching an event. Sometimes you're researching the artist. Um, kind of depends on <laughs> the, the piece you chose. You might even be researching a technique for how it was made. Um, but some, you want some kind of background that helps you to understand the piece better. And then your understanding, the look again, and the assessment. So it won't take that long. So I'm going to really ask and encourage you to just you know, do these right away. And that's why I'm even doing this separately. So you have it separate from the rest of the uh, material I'm going to present tonight. So there is the tabular process. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. But I think um, if you go back and look at the example and you read the book, I think you should be fine. So now we'll close this out and do the painting.